interested in waiting tables downstairs? I can make that happen for you. No, thank you. I'm fine. Just trying to help out. I don't need that kind of help. You too good for it? Let go of me. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Get off me! Let's move her! So Martha, we are so excited to be joined by you today. So the first thing I have to say is congratulations. The show, The Cleaning Lady, just premiered. So where I want to start, I mean, this is an actor and actress's dream to be on a scripted show on a major network. It's just been seen by the masses this week. How has it been for you? It's just incredible. I mean, for me, you know, the whole process of, of doing this is just obviously to get it out there and just see, you know, how people respond. And, um, you know, as I've said many times, like the actual premiere, I was in the plane up in the air. <laughs> I was still, I was flying from Sydney to Australia. I mean, Sydney to Australia. This is where my jet lag comes from, Sydney to New York. And during that time, I mean, I've seen the episode, I was still able to just go through the Twitter um the Twitter, Twitter, and just seeing the response, it was just, just so incredible. And, and the fact that everybody was just applauding the representation that they saw um, throughout the show. And um, it just, yeah, I was just so excited. So. <laughs> well, you already told me a little bit about just like social media, but what about the cast and your friends, family, what's been everybody's reaction um, to seeing that first episode? Well, first of all, the cast, um, we're all so close. I mean, we spent four months together in Albuquerque. And then at the same time, we were in in a COVID bubble in January doing the pilot. So, um, you know, we've developed this really close a close relationship that um, we're, we just have this ball of energy of positivity and the fact that everybody's responding to it really well. It's just, um, it's incredible. We, we don't, you know, you, whenever you bring out a project, you just don't know how people are going to respond. And, and the fact that it's positive, it's even better, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, that's always better. And you already kind of mentioned it, what I want to transition to. I mean, representation is so important. There is not enough people that are representing the Asian community in Hollywood, but this is what's great about this show. I mean, obviously on the back end from director to writer, and we'll get to that. I mean, um, producer, we'll get to that in a second, but how about for you to be, well, let me start from the beginning. I mean, a lot of times we see Olivia Rodrigo, for instance, this pop star who's Filipino had to play a Spanish character. Mm -hmm. A lot of Filipinos that I've interviewed have gotten Spanish roles, but this was a Filipino role and you are Filipino and got a, got an audition for a Filipino role. I mean, how did that feel for you? Um, that's such a, you know, it's a great way to, um, to put it because for me throughout my career, um, yes, I've played Latino as well. I played, um, uh, in third watch, um, I believe a, a Latino sister there. And, and it is, it's because, you know, you're just trying to find work at, at that, you know, at this point, but right now you see so many things changing and evolving and it's so incredible to be part of this project, which is groundbreaking on all levels, obviously, as you mentioned, in terms of the representation off camera as well as on um, that just says everything and then to top it off knowing that after the show premiered it, it was Fox's um, I believe highest rating uh, for a series premiere in two years and you know obviously there's sweetness in that but it, it just is indicative of what people want these days of what people um, are really craving because they are exposed to so much culture through social media etc that you know there are educated that they don't need to um you know stick to one narrative it's now it's more of a an expression and just like exploration of different cultures through media and it's just groundbreaking to be part of it i mean and exciting to be part of this <laughs> absolutely and and your cast i mean that's what's great about this too is it's such a diverse cast well, tell me about that to be on set and to look around and, you know, you have Cambodian actresses and actors and you have, you know, Filipino. I mean, what was that like to just be on a show where, let's be honest, maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, this wouldn't have happened. So what was that like to be part of such a groundbreaking series? That's exactly what I said um, in another interview. I was just like, 25 years ago, there would never have been an opportunity for a series regular lead to, um, you know, looking for a specific Southeast Asian. We were just Asian at that time, you know? And so, you know, working with Elodie Young, uh, she's incredible. Obviously she's Electra. she's already, you know, she's very well known and so talented and so open. But for both of us to actually, um, you know, embrace our culture in every way throughout the representation of our characters 
for me, it's it's so wonderful to live it out as a, throughout the series. Because normally I I play a one day role or a guest starring role, but to actually you know get to experience the role and flesh it out over ten episodes, um, it's I haven't never experienced that before. Uh, it's 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 amazing. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I keep saying amazing, exciting. I got to get new words here and there. <laughs> Well, I'm going to correct you on one thing. You said 10 episodes. We're going for a season two, three, five, seven and beyond. So you, <laughs> put Chris. it out there. <laughs> um, but let's get into your character. I mean, you already touched on it. So obviously we know Elodie, Elodie's character has a son and you're, you know, play her sister-in-law, but you, you know, the son that's really sick. But let's talk about Fiona. Tell me a little bit about her, just sort of her spirit. Um, some of the things that she's going to be going through, because I know she has her own um, things that she's overcoming in the series as well. Yes. Um, well, I think Fiona being an undocumented uh, worker uh, in the country and, and being a single mother, that, that's already, those are already extraordinary circumstances to deal with. And, um, you know, her spirit, her fire, fiery kind of spirit where you see a lot of um, <laughs> physicality in her, um, especially the first scene, you know, where she's punching. I know for me, the first time I read the script and I saw that I got to punch someone in the first like few minutes, I was like, yes. <laughs> So it already said everything about who she was. She is impulsive. She is spontaneous. She's unpredictable. But that also stems from her circumstances, you know, what she's dealing with being undocumented. But um, and the fact that there is this huge risk of losing everything at any moment. So I think that lends to um, her responses and the way she um, reacts. But you know, in all essence, Filipinos are very passionate people too. And we're very, um, how can I say, animated. Whatever situation we're in, we'll always find a way to sing, dance, eat through it. It's <laughs> it's just part of our way with dealing with life. And, and I think that that's such a, I'm so excited to share that side of our culture with everybody. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many things about Fiona. One thing is that you'll see a really empowering arc throughout the series, I think, too, because she is trying to find a voice um, throughout this and dealing with being a single mother and the actions that have caused her to be in the situation and and her family. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of challenges that are very interesting and comedic. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I liked about your character in the episode is it, it, she wasn't flat. You know, sometimes they'll write characters that are just flat and you feel like, okay, I know what they're going to say every episode. I mean, there's already so much going on and we got to see little previews and there's been trailers put out and stuff. When you read the script, what was it about Fiona that you're like, I need to play her. This is, this is, this is a role for me. Like, what was it about her that you saw that you definitely were, were attracted to this role? Well, first of all, she was Filipino. So I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> And then um, obviously her spirit. I think there is just so much. I mean, many people who are going through pain um, or just a burdened life, you know, they deal with things in, in many ways. And I love how Fiona dealt with it through her lightness, her, her optimism, her fieriness. Um, and that's something that I wanted to explore as an actor as well, just to, to see the, the, the balance of how she can, you know, portray the, those two um, elements of who she is. <laughs> Yeah. And, and you can see that. So obviously we've seen the first episode and I, you know, we only know a little bit and I know you can't spoil anything, but let's talk to the audience right now. Why do they have to see this show? I mean, we've gotten a little taste. There's the organized crime, you know, there's obviously dealing yeah. with struggles with, you know, immigration and there's so many different characters and layers and representation for you. Let's, let's take you out of it for a second. And you're a watcher. What about the show? Would you turn to people and say, you got to watch the show. This is amazing. Besides you being in it, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> no, for me, it's so exciting. I mean, there are, there are so many elements, as you mentioned. There is the action, the drama of the mob world, and then there are the topical and relevant issues that we are facing today. So, I mean, it, it's just a testament to the writers, Miranda Kwok and, um, you know, Melissa Carter, uh, the showrunner. They have really beautifully shaped this uh, story in a way that incorporates all the elements of entertainment, drama, explosions, etc. Yet at the same time, you know, they're able to cleverly weave the, the issues that we are facing by, um, I guess, 
being relatable through the family dynamic that you see in the show. So, uh, I mean, with all of that, I mean, you got to see a show like that. You know, it's just, uh, it's there's so many things that can happen. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons too. And plus the fact that it is historic. I mean, uh, just the, the amount of representation that we mentioned and the diversity in the show is, um, it's, it is, it's just indicative of just how media is it finally opening up and, you know, um, just uh, moving forward forward in terms of uh, yeah just kind of being relatable and seeing yourself it's like oh that looks like me and I've gotten so many dms from Filipinos who have mentioned that one um, said you remind me so much of my godmother in New York and da, da, da. like it's it is it's so wonderful to be able to relate to characters specifically so what, what I'd love to bounce off of what you were just saying is that you know a lot of times when people grow up and don't see representation, they don't feel like there's a space for them. What was it about you um, being a fighter and saying, look, there may not be a lot of Filipino representation yet, but but I truly believe it will be there one day. And you pursued acting and you and, and besides pursuing acting, you also teach acting. So um, now you're a face that many people are looking up to and saying there is Filipino actors and actresses that are successful. So for you going back when you first decided to be an actress, what was it about you that you said, OK, even if I don't see it yet, I know there's going to be that one day and I want to go for it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just a long journey. But I think in terms of just getting work <laughs> in general uh, was just my priority. And I had to really release a lot of the, um, I guess, the labels of whether I was Asian, I was not Asian enough, or can I play Spanish, or they're going to go a different direction. Like I heard everything. And I had to just, you know, block all that out and just really trust the work that I would bring into the audition. And I think that's how, that's all we can do. And we can't do anything that we can't change. Then all we can do is try to convince them that this is what you guys need. And that was the one thing that kept me going. Um, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There were so many times where I'm like, I'm done, but <laughs> there's nothing there. But, you know, it, it is, it's, a, it's just a testament to every actor out there who just trusts their work and that eventually doors will open regardless of, you know, sometimes the role may not be written for you, but the fact that you go in there and show them what else you can bring will eventually be shifted for you. So that was my kind of like <laughs> epiphany, which is only a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> And look, it paid off. Now you're in an extremely successful show that's getting great ratings. You know, one of the, the producers is Shay Mitchell, a very famous Filipino actress, yes. um, obviously Pretty Little Liars, but we all saw her in the yes. first season of You. What was that like knowing that there was a female and a Filipino female that was on that production you know, a producer. So there was that voice making sure that in the room making decisions that people like you could get a role and it would be written well. What was that like working with Shay? Yeah, I mean, for me, just knowing that the support and the fact that people are really understanding the need for this, um, because I, I think for me, you know, the only constant thing is change. And if you're not changing, then you're not evolving, you're holding on to something that we're not represented by anymore. So having someone who is of um, you know Filipino descent, knowing that you know I'm sure she's seen what her mother's gone through. She's very uh, familiar with the culture, but it's not even just Filipinos. It's just every culture or marginalized voices that need to be represented in that way. So that's why the show is so authentic because um, you know on and off camera, it, all cultures are represented. So therefore that's the, their experiences are what is being portrayed through this and those are real so it's not someone else making up something that they think it's supposed to be it's actually something that we've all experienced and that's why me playing this role mainly I always look back at what my parents went through mm -hmm. and so I don't have any children so um, for me I always rem was reminded by the transition um, and the experiences that my parents went through during the early days of our immigration and um, it, they were definitely challenging on all fronts so um, that's why it's great to have someone who does have a background of that and can you know really support the um, just the, the movement. I mean, Fox Fox really just spearheading this as well is just, uh, it's really great, uh, very risk uh, <laughs> in terms of taking it. But I think, you know, with the with the numbers that they've seen in the last couple of days, it just says, it says it all, it's just moving forward. So I'm really happy. <laughs> well, Filipinos, both abroad and here in the States are so supportive of other Filipinos. So you have such a big community behind you. 
I wanted to ask you lastly, you know, um, it talks a lot about like immigration and sometimes what's hard is, and, and it kind of addresses this in the show is figuring out how to stay true to your roots while being in a different country. So for you as an actress being here now in the United States, but being from the Philippines, how do you stay connected with your Filipino roots at times? I think um, one thing that I have to say is like, you know, moving to Australia um, uh, during the 80s, there were, there was not, <laughs> it was a small population of Asians, put it that way. And, um, you know, we have to learn how to adjust. And I knew that my parents were going there for, for giving us uh, better opportunities, a better life. And that is the main reason for, for immigration most of the time. But it is, it's about um, you know, the, the challenge of staying true to your heritage, yet at the same time assimilating um, without ostracizing yourself as well. There's just, that is the constant battle of the beginnings of, of you know, moving to a new country. But for me, honestly, I mean, moving to New York, I mean, New York is also a very special place. <laughs> Moving to New York was like, nobody cares about what you look like or anything. It's just about get out of the way or, or show me what you got, you know? And that is the spirit in the city that I absolutely just embraced because it was a melting pot of culture that it didn't matter anymore. It was more about who you are as a person and how you represent yourself, your culture or who you are and bringing it to the table. That's that's something that I think I learned from New York. So in terms of assimilating to, with, in America, yeah. I, I just, I was like, Phew. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Finally, what do you want to say to everybody that's watched this? And um, I just want to say thank you so much for just supporting and just enjoying um, the show and, and really acknowledging um, the representation that was made uh, throughout this. I mean, w you know, we are such a, every, everything, we're just so global and everything is an instant connection now that, uh, you know, it, it's, to, to ignore the, the evolution of, of diversity is, is not gonna do us any good. So this show definitely is a great step forward. So I'm so happy that everybody's enjoying it. Plus the explosions and the drama is in there. And um, at the same time, you know, to the Filipinos who are gonna be watching this, yeah, we're, we're really being represented in a way that's not stereotypical, in a way that is humanized and that, um, yeah, I'm very proud of. So. It's, it's a win-win for everyone. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell everybody that Monday nights on Fox, they have to watch The Cleaning Lady and they have to support Fiona, of course. So thank you so much for taking time. I know you are super busy when you have a new show out. We wow. really appreciate you talking to us. And we're so glad that Hollywood is starting to get it. And we have Filipino representation on major networks. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate your time and just having the platform to, um, you know, elevate shows and, and just get it, give us a voice. So Everybody got a dark side, and darling, this is mine.